Hi there, everybody. Welcome and thank you for attending this Lunch and Learn session organised in collaboration between the Knowledge and Library Services at NCIC and CLIC, the Cumbria Learning and Improvement Collaborative. My name is Ashley Eaton and I am from CLIC and today we are joined by Anna Foster, who is the Trust Lead for Strategy and Sustainability at CNTW. Um, and she's going to present, we need to talk about climate change. Thank you, Ashley, and uh, thank you very much for inviting me along and for coming along today today's session. I'm really um, excited to have the opportunity to talk about climate change because it's something I like to talk about a lot. And the timing is really relevant as well, isn't it, with uh, COP26 just um, coming to uh, its conclusion at the moment. So, uh, so yes, um, as Ashley says, I'm Anna Foster. Uh, I work at CNTW and I'm the Trust Lead for Strategy and Sustainability. And I'll be talking today about our staff engagement programme, which we've called CNTW Climate Health, and that's the logo that we have across the organisation. About what will we do today? Really trying to convey that this is about something we all want to um, tackle and address. So this all came about um, really because a couple of years ago I was sat in meetings and often thinking I could, there's something to do with climate change that I could mention here in this uh, in this conversation um, or adaptation about the impact that we uh, are having on the planet. The NHS is about 4% of the carbon footprint of England, but I never really felt that I had permission to. I wasn't the trust uh, lead for strategy and sustainability at that time. Um, I was doing a, a completely different job. So I would often sort of notice things that we'd be talking about. Um, so for example, we might be uh, looking at a business case for a new um, property. And the business case would say about how what good links there are for roads, but it wouldn't say anything about the cycling infrastructure or the public transport in infrastructure. So it felt like we weren't taking into account as much as we could the environmental impact and the social impact of decisions we were making. And I've been through a bit of a journey myself um, at that point. This was about 2018, 2019. It was when the IPCC report came out that said we have 12 years to really turn things around and that that really triggered something in me um, and I went through a bit of a moment myself um, around um, feeling anxious about climate change and, and its impact and, and really just wanted to do something about it um, but just didn't feel that I had permission. Um, but to cut a long story short um, I talked I did start talking about it to my boss quite a lot um, and ultimately, we um, we got to the point where, as an organisation, we did declare a climate and ecological emergency in March 2020. Um, so that was fantastic. But then a pandemic hit. <laughs> so the timing uh, wasn't great. But my real message today about um, is what you can do, what you can do, and all of us can do about climate change, is to talk about it. Some of you may have seen this talk. It's a, it's a famous TED talk by Catherine Hayhoe, and she talks about the most important thing you can do to fight climate change is to talk about it. So my big, you know, my take home message today would really be give yourself permission to talk about it at work. Um, a lot has changed I've seen in the last two years anyway, in terms of people feeling able to raise issues about climate change and adaptation and ecological change as well. And problems with biodiversity at work but talk about it in your teams um, and just just do it and there's a couple of reasons why um, there is evidence that says if you are experiencing distress and anxiety because of thinking about the climate change and the climate impact which is entirely normal but taking action is has been evidence to help with that anxiety and distress so, so number one you're doing something which would um, which help. It also raises awareness um, and encourages people to think about it in places where they might not necessarily think about it because often we find people are really diligent recyclers at home and then it all goes out the window when they get to work, for example, or, or things like that. But 
when talking about it, the other thing I would say always is um, talk from the heart about the values that we share. And that's the way to talk about climate change um, rather than um, being a could be being seen as a scaremonger, I say, I'd say. So the values we share across the NHS are the NHS. So I, um, after quite a lot of trial and error, I have to say, <laughs> found that the best impact um, of engaging NHS colleagues in talking about uh, the climate crisis is to link it back to health always. And actually, there, there is a lot that we need to think about in terms of the impact on health of climate change and the causes of climate change. So if you think about air pollution and the impact that that's already having on people, um, not just their physical health, but also there's new evidence as well around um, impact on mental health and, and cognitive function as well. If you live in a heavily polluted area for air pollution, um, it's going to exacerbate mental distress as well. So this is a really good framework uh, from the Centre for uh, Sustainable Healthcare which are the four principles of sustainable healthcare, which I'll quickly run through because they really uh, make sense to me and they really seem to be good quality healthcare. So the first one is prevention because the most sustainable NHS is the NHS that healthy people don't need. So, so there's something in there about um, prevention, promoting health um, and tackling the causes of illnesses and in inequalities as much as possible, which of course is in line with the long term plan. Um, but we know obviously we can't eliminate, <laughs> there will always be a need for the NHS. Um, but that leads to the second point where self care and empowerment is the second principle of sustainable health care. So, you know, you'll al already have a number of services um, that we do across the NHS that fit with these principles around prevention and um, empowerment and early intervention and encouraging patients to take a much greater role in their own health and healthcare. The third principle um, here is written as lean service delivery, but David Attenborough put it a lot better in, um, when he said, just don't waste, don't waste anything. Um, and that I thought that was, um, I wasn't very impressed when I first heard that, if I'm honest, but the more I thought about it, you know, I've completely changed my mind because it's so simple. Don't waste our time. Don't waste our resources. Um, you know, so that so you can link so much around service delivery to not wasting anything. So all those um, pieces of work around service improvement and lean activity, um, they, they, they are all contributing to sustainable healthcare. And then finally, um, and importantly, is about reducing carbon. And for those of you who are familiar with the Greener NHS and the NHS Net Zero target of 2040, will know that that's very much around carbon. In um, Across the NHS, it's primary care and acute trusts, which um, emit the most carbon, to be honest, in terms of anaesthetic gases um, and, um, and, and other sources of carbon. And, but even in the sector like where I work in mental health, you know, the buildings we heat, uh, some of our buildings are 200 years old and it's pretty hard to decarbonise, but we're, we're trying our best. Uh, and thinking about travel as well. So in our organisation in the pandemic, uh, travel dropped by 50 percent and it's gone up a little bit. It's gone up about 15% has recovered and it will go up a bit more again, but hopefully it won't be anything like uh, the levels that we saw before the pandemic. And we're looking at um, having electric vehicles in our fleet. And I had my first experience of range anxiety this week when I drove to Carlisle and my <laughs> the first time in my electric car and it didn't quite uh, have the range that it claimed it did at the beginning. So there's still lots of work to do around um, Electric vehicles, they're not the answer to everything, but um, but but they're um, worth having at the moment. Um, and, but it would be good to have some more charges around, <laughs> particularly for, for people who have to travel around Cumbria for work. I can imagine that that's a real challenge. But also working with local authorities in urban areas to lobby for um, better cycling infrastructure and facilities for active travel. 
so people can save money, get fitter <laughs> and get to work um, and NHS staff can get to work and travel around for work and like, free up the roads for NHS staff who still have to drive and can't avoid that. So they are the four um, principles of sustainable health care, which um, it's just worth being able to rattle those off if you are in a position where you're wanting to persuade someone else maybe about um, why, why we should do something. And then finally, um, to talk about the conversations we've had um, in CNTW. So a bit, a bit similar to this programme, we had a programme of discussions uh, between May and July, and they were linked to the seven uh, categories within our green plan that we've developed. So we talked about carbon, the, uh, the health and psychological impact of climate and ecological change. We talked about green spaces and biodiversity and well-being um, because we, we really want to explore a lot the, uh, the nature-based interventions and the health benefits of being outside, um, not wasting anything, making sure that we take the environmental impact into account with every decision we make. That's about actually changing our business case process and changing our tendering process and, and changing a lot of our systems so that we're not making decisions just on the basis of money. Um, and then how we work with our partners across the region. Um, there's some, you might be here, but there's an ICS sustainability group, which is really starting to um, get going and thinking about how we can join together and the benefits as a region, how we can have conversations with our 70,000 staff across the North East and North Cumbria about this and then how we use our influence nationally as well. So they were very similar to this. They were um, online events and um, anyone could sign up, all members of staff. And we really tried to focus the conversation about what little things, what little changes could people make in their everyday work lives um, to, to help. And then lastly, um, I would encourage you, if you're interested, to go and have a look, and um, it's on the resources page, at a little animation that we developed called Sam's Story in our green plan. And this was us wanting to describe a really positive vision of the future. We have to be really careful in the CNTW when we're talking about the climate and ecological crisis, because we don't want to exacerbate the distress of our service users. We know that people with mental health issues are particularly vulnerable to you know, news items and, and bad news. So we, we do try to be very careful with our language, but also to have an ethos of um, positivity and hope. So we developed a story thinking about someone who's a student nurse today, and by 2050, they'll be the age I am now, um, and what will their career have looked like and how will the world have changed around them? So um, it goes through changes in their personal lives um, and as their career develops and they go on holiday to the south of England and drink English wine, but um, try not to get bitten by the horrible insects that are carrying diseases that didn't used to, disease, uh, to carry in the UK for example. Um, so trying to give a sort of balanced view, really being realistic about some of the changes that we know are baked in, in terms of climate change, but also the changes that we can make in the way that we deliver our healthcare and the way that we live our lives. Um, and ends up with Sam at the end of the story, um, looking at an oak tree that had been planted um, at their hospital in 2020 um, and having a little chat with their grandchildren. So it's just uh, it's just a five minute animation, but um, hopefully it conveys a positive vision of sustainable health care. And that's the end of my uh, presentation. So that these are links to the, those resources that I've mentioned. So there's the Catherine Hayhoe TED talk. There's a link to our green plan, um, the link to Sam's story animation and also our Twitter handle for our climate health campaign. And then if you haven't seen it, the NHS, Greener NHS delivering a net zero national health service uh, plan, which is a very comprehensive plan. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Anna. I really like the four principles because it's just a great way of them being able to try and, you know, obviously promote this and, and share it out. Um, and as you say, making sure it's linked to health as well, which is brilliant. Mm -hmm. Once again, thank you ever so much, everybody, for attending and hopefully see you soon.